I'm going to show Fable some silly stuff today. Hooray. Liar. What do you mean, liar? That's what liar. I... Oh my god. Anyway, this... Incorrect. Malazio was first. And Malazio was meant to be alone among all things. So but how confused Malazio are you feeling today, betrayed. Fable? Betrayed? Um, betrayed by whom? God, I guess. What? <laughs> <laughs> did you hear that? Wow. I, I did not know that God personally betrayed this this person. That's insane. Yes, it is. Since the go. Callisto Protocol brought it up while playing, I thought of a future where humanity becomes genetic freaks. And it reminded me of a game where you idea. Genesis Rising. And oh. after a brief search, not only does it have no videos on YouTube uh, covering it, but the IMDB page is also a complete show. I've never it heard of this game before he Steam, talks about so this in this video. Didn't even launch for like, much. I do not know if it's uh, some creepy looking ships, but I never heard of this thing. Apparently it was published by THQ Nordic. It's people. For those who could run it, they'd be treated to everything being invisible or constant crashing. Huh. This was due to several folder directories just being missing. Oh. They did make it playable eventually, but on my end, all the <laughs> ships were 100% black. It looks to be some kind of shader issue since setting that to medium fixed the ships right up. Oh, it still crashed a lot, and we'll go over all the joys of that later. But the point is, even when you could get the game in a box, it was scuffed. Now, there Ooh. are tons of RTS games out there that have a similar story, but Genesis Rising is such a bizarre blend of madness that it's worth what talking the hell about. Am I looking to sum at? the game up in a sentence, your spaceships are alive and filled with blood. Ship destroyed. Oh. Blood beast. But that's Ugh. only the epidermis of the setting. From the credits, I learned the game is based off an That just makes me think of a hive tyrant, honestly. Or, uh, you know, a hive fleet. I'm not really sure how oh, they do God. space combat, but it's kind of, Well, I think it would be horrifying. Oh, my goodness. You know, everyone who watches our oh, 40k videos know what I mean. Yep. Also, I just wanted to say the fact that he said humanity became genetic freaks. Humanity has a bad habit of trying to make their environment adapt to them to the point where we literally will literally got uh, have coats to go into the cold, scuba suits to go into water, but eventually if genetics gets to a point where we can modify ourselves, there is going to be a lot of heavy modification. Even uh, if it's not listen, even if it's not just to like do the thing. Yeah. Listen, Fable, either we adapt with clothes or whatnot, or we force the environment to adapt to us. There's no either way. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm also talking about the fact that uh, in Batman Beyond, there's such a thing as slicers. You oh, know, those yeah, people that... those people. I have forgot about those people that, like, take animal DNA. That would just be all the fur the furry community. Just all of them. Yeah. I th yeah, but... Yeah, but there is kind of a thing that people do. There is people that do body modification, and there's no reason to, but people want to. And it's just like, yeah, we're... Never yeah, have, but, uh, never have uh, genetic modifications, guys. I, Please I, never. Yeah, uh, body modification isn't nearly as they say in the movies. It's a lot more destructive to the human body. But yeah, we're going to move on past that point. And we have only your single issue Serbian comic called Cruciform. Oh. It takes place in the far future where humanity are the galactic villains. It's only a single issue with some interesting art, but what the, the game hell? itself gives all the context you need. After nearly being wiped out by several alien threats, humanity bounced back and are now the rulers of the universe. Oh. Not the galaxy, the universe. All other aliens are either wiped out, enslaved, or thralls of humanity. Those survivors must also worship the human god. We're a brutal regime in the future, led by the Chair of Three, which represents the most important human factions. The military, the judicature, and the state church. Ah, I see. What's interesting is that the human god was once a man. He united everyone against the alien threat. He was part man and part god, and it's unclear where he came from or how exactly he did what he did. He's known as the emperor, savior of mankind. Now, you may... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest, there has to be some 40k in here somewhere. We have heard a similar story before, but this right. one is delivered like an Invader Zim bit. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? The aliens, realizing the power of this demagogue and fearing for their very existence, Captured, tortured, and killed him. 
It looks more like he got jumped after class. <laughs> they're not even hitting. <laughs> they're not even hitting him. What the hell? Yeah, they're not. It's kind of hilarious. It's a, uh, it's a thing. Now I might stream some stuff later because I might be feeling it, but I'll also still be there with Fable to cheer him on and remind him that I'm his health bar. Oh my god. Anyway. Martyr. His message was even more powerful. He's still alive on there. On that image, it looks like he's about to bench press it. Or like, you know, I forget the move. But anyway, it's been a while since I used one of those machines. Church. Again, not much elaborated on. It feels like it doesn't matter much because the intro rocks. The voice acting oh. throws more ham at you than an exploding butcher shop. <laughs> it's being done over what sounds like the villain of Dune theme. That's, ex times into space That's actually really funny. For a thousand years, our influence spread across the length and breadth of known space. So it looked like the Strog almost wiped us out until the Savior saved us. Okay. But humanity's biggest achievement was the Organids. Living spaceships that would grow, I'm sorry. mutate, and then adapt to their environment. Next. That idea horrifies me. I'm sorry, I would not like to be in a ship that's alive. No, then never... Never go... Never uh, look up uh, Star Wars Legends that you saw in Bond, because a lot of their technology is is more uh bioorganic than it is mechanical so oh. literally they have living ships and their weapons are literally living uh weapons oh dear no other aliens Th there's a reason so there's a reason for it and it's kind of interesting but it's also kind of stupid hmm. spaceships that would grow mutate and then adapt to their environment no huh. other aliens had mastered these so within a few thousand i just years, don't like the high republic stuff because it seems How to be the most bland version of star wars i've ever seen <laughs> Yeah, no, the, the High Republic has a lot of potential. It's just what we got from the show, like, from what we got in main media shows, it it got the worst part of it. The the comics and stuff kind of do tend to go more interesting and stuff, but yeah. The only real just, comics just, I've... Disney, Disney doesn't do anything with it. The only real Star Wars comics that I've seen are, and liked were the Darth Vader comics. Because a friend was talking like, yeah, his redemp like he got away scot free of uh you know, because he died through redemption. And I'm like, No. You obviously haven't read the comics N no. He is suffering eternally. This is basically his hell and this is his release. Right. Because he just has those memories and thoughts and the ghosts of the people he's killed constantly reminding him. And he also has the concept burning pains. I would highly recommend anyone watching this go look up those Darth Vader comics where it's literally just a man who has done wrong, suffering and knowing that he's suffering, but he can he thinks he cannot go back. You stop it, I mean, these are some virile looking ships. Virile it sets the stage for a bizarre and dark setting, and that's when the first whiplash hits. Father, what? don't be silly. The people celebrate that the birth armor. of the Universal Heart. I just happen to be born the same day. <laughs> yes, I suppose you are right. But it is fun to pretend. You plays a five-year-old child whose hair cutter hates him. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here with you, Father. I enjoy being on the bridge. Oh the story God. will skip ahead a few decades, just so that the kid, Icona, can get his own spaceship. Oh. After all, it'll grow up with him. Father, I don't Kinda know horrifying. To say. But isn't it illegal to own a ship at my age? It's such a light-hearted opening, which feels unbelievably strange. Come on, well. son, let's go harvest the life essence of the fallen. Oh. Wait for me. I mean, someone's got it. No, they don't. The setting. Does anyone want to see this? Yeah. I'll try shunting. That's a good trick. Icona and his Omni Cruiser grow up off-screen. So we don't get the more sentimental bits of H.R. Giger's Aragon. What Icon the is fuck? a commander now, and his hair has <laughs> H.R. Giger's Aragon. Oh my lord. Funny enough, I watched the Aragon movie and played the game. They're both terrible, but I heard the books are actually pretty good. Oh no, not good book. That's oh. illegal. In this, reality, in this reality nowadays, most entertaining me of uh, being good is illegal morphed into being the rock yeah we gotta have, have trash that. yeah 
helps him to hunt down Universal Heart, which his father went missing looking for. The heart is, supposedly, where all life comes from. And there's only a single galaxy left that people haven't checked. Captain, we've reached the last unexplored galaxy in the universe. On its own, that's an insane thing to hear. Yeah. This galaxy has aliens that possess organids. And that's the gist of the campaign. Wipe out your enemies and find the heart. For now, let's talk about the graphics. To be fair, the shaders aren't at the full potential they could be since it's outright broken. Though even with that, for a 2007 strategy game, it looks pretty good. A lot of it comes from how smartly they use lights and color. Like, if you zoom in all the way on a spaceship, the texture won't be that sharp, but how parts glow and how color is arranged across it is really interesting. It does when give you, you a tell of what it is. Normally, the ships do have a living quality to them. You see how different flesh and metal parts reflect in the sun, lights flicker on and off. Their general design can resemble ancient sea life or twisted forms of the human body. The Ugh. ships being organic isn't some kind of lore afterthought. It is front and center and gross. A space station isn't just a safe harbor, it's a pulsating flesh reservoir. You don't have to harvest the field, you harvest the station. Your collectors are basically horrible, gigantic mosquitoes. That is You can physically see them getting engorged with blood when they collect it. Well, they're the best at powering your economy, since blood is also currency in this setting, most of your ships are able to drain blood, including in the middle of battle. By harvesting enemy corpse ships, your own vessels can slowly heal themselves. So when your own ships are getting Uh. wounded, they can plug an IV into their enemy and start vampiring their health away, along with collecting any mutations they find to add into your own gene bank. That's actually pretty cool. some thinking to this since some more destructive weapons... This feels like it's a game of a a Tyranid Hive Mind attack. A higher chance of outright (laughs) obliterating enemy ships, but playing it riskier means having a higher chance of getting a ship carcass, which is more literal blood, sweat, and tears for your war machine. Most weapons are genes that you use to mutate your craft. These are mutations that you physically see on the models, too. You can watch new weapons grow out, or parts of the ship extend, or strange appendages coming out of it. I know I said the mothership in Homeworld basically gave birth to new craft. That is actually what's happening. Pulling up a station is killing a gigantic being, ripping the shell away and sending your roaches in to clean up the remains. It's like watching a fight in Star Wars and a whale fall at the same time. They even ground What is a whale fall? Is that when a whale is beached? And when they go up against your primordial... No, 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 no. A whale fall is... Wi- uh, basically, it's a phenomenon that when a whale can no longer swim anymore, it, it slowly... Okay, this is going to be really dark. It slowly drowns and falls to the bottom of the ocean where its body is, uh, rots away and is fed on by little creatures and other, or, and other things. Oh. Th- that's a whale fall. It, it, yeah, whales... Sadly, the thing is, you know how whales do come up for air and blow uh, air out of their blowholes? Yeah. Like yeah, uh, water out of that. Yeah, whales, when they get too old, they can't do that anymore. And eventually, so they, they just die. They drown. They drown. Yeah, they sadly drown, which is a really weird and messed up thing to say, especially since whales are more aquatic creatures. But yes, they. Um, they, their bodies slowly descend slash fall down to the bottom of the ocean floor where uh, other creatures begin to feast off the corpse and then what's left of it is picked off by uh, scavengers. I can see why he calls it a whale fall that, then. Pretty old sea mon- yeah, it's a, yeah, that's why it's called a whale fall. They're, they're kind so of rare because where the bodies do fall are, yeah, deep, are a bit harder deep. to reach through normal rings. Yeah. We do have, there have been some actual footage of it, like, well, not of the well falling itself, but uh, the remains of the thing. It's kind of like an elephant graveyard, but it, but instead of the whales all going to the same place for their final resting place, it's just wherever it happens. Oh, okay. So yeah. There. Visually, just playing the game is so excellent at making humanity an eldritch nightmare. Ugh. You either die yeah, or fall I in line with that. universal rulers. Though there are alien forces that are terrors in their own right, with their own cool, unique designs. Hmm. Still, I think bio ships are very underused in sci-fi, and Genesis Rising. That has is some true. They are, but I'd ra- but I'd like to keep it that way, to be honest. Or deli wrapped Cylon Raiders. This also makes the rest this of the tone of way more psychotic. This kind of reminds me of something that may or that I may or may not have read when it came to 40k that had to do with bio ships, but not the way it should happen, though. Oh. Uh. Basically, to my understanding, I could be wrong. The bio ships that were created were were a whale like creature that was actually in space. I forgot to mention that yesterday. A space whale. Of course, we're talking about whales in space. It's. I don't remember if it's hundred percent true that it happened in forty k though. I don't remember where I got it, but essentially, 
the poor creatures are used by are used by Nurgleite demons to move across the galaxy and also used to transport some of their soldiers. It's really messed up. It's just like it's just like a bioorganic ship, but in the most in the most chaos way possible. It's just like you guys just really suck and are not even that interesting or fun to talk about, right? Yeah. You know. Anyway. Moving forward. Yeah, I could be wrong. Captain Icona. It's fine. I think you should avoid talking to the Vicar until what? until what? Well, he's until drunk. You're a little more sober, sir. Enough, soldier. Connect me to Juno. Look, great value Captain Diomedes getting obliterated is already <laughs> odd, but they went the extra mile to show he's drinking out of some kind of living conch shell. That is a creature that lives solely to sweat Everclear. This is the That is kind of horrifying. But yeah. yeah you meant it, so. it sounds like something that Dark Eldar would make. Yeah. Future Serbia runs. <laughs> it probably saves money. This extends to the holograms, which are actually shape formers. So oh. instead of culling someone, you temporarily generate a homunculus clone of them. Oh. Or something. And don't you worry, this gets one hell of a payoff later. What? Getting back to it, the environment looks good too, with lots of bold, striking colors. I do like. I would have liked yeah. some pitch black space to In things space, out, honestly, bold, striking colors is what you need to make things separate out, separate out of. When the background is more dim, I really appreciate the weapon and ship lights and how they contrast the against the background. The interesting thing, though, Even the is box art there that, is which is how supposedly how I noticed it best way back in the day. It promised uh, a creepy Some people believe future. that when you're actually in space in the ship, all you see is darkness, and whenever we do see light. It's because we're near like a we're near more like a sun, but honestly, a lot of people do believe that the void of space is just that an actual void. And when you think it like that, it makes me kind of sad because it's just like I, I get it. Light, to our understanding, doesn't work the way it should, or doesn't maybe maybe light does works in a certain way in our brains. But come on, at least let people dream that they see beautiful colors in space. Yeah, there and is not, also you know, just the back in the void. There's also that dumb thing that <laughs> everyone says whenever playing a space game and people talk about the sounds. They're like, you wouldn't hear the sound in space. Like, no one cares. That's a game. It's like let let our let what we understand about reality not sink into fun, fun games, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. And on that, it delivered in spades. Yeah. The idea of Genesis Rising and how creative it is visually is without a doubt the strongest part of the game. The most barren are the endgame shapeformer cutscenes. Oh. In comparison to their sound design, these look like masterpieces. I'll show you why. Yeah. This mission, the search for the heart. That voice. It is a terrible mistake. It is no mistake, Bishop. I Those see. voices, no, it's there are no effects, so no music. It's just you and the voices. <laughs> it's just you and the voices, like normal for you, Fable. Matt, look, it's Mokador the Sigilite. He's speaking to us. Oh my god. What, what, right now, it's uh, just me. What horrible atrocities have you committed today, my uh, Mokador the, the hero? Oh my voices. god. The you savior, really whatever like the freaking title is. Muck it or the hero. Listen, I'm all, listen, I'm, I'm all for, I'm all for characters who do evil for the greater good and all that crap, but he's stupid. Leave me alone. Oh my god. It's not a bug, it's just the game. The oh. ambient sound design is also more empty, but not going for realism, just they just don't the have that many effects. If it's not music, I do like those voices. The voices are pure ham, and it sounds like they're getting, like, just barely direction at all. I, wait, I have a question. Can you go back a little bit? Like a couple seconds? Oh, to where? Right here? Has uh, never felt past more... this cutscene. Like, the yeah, ambient right. sound design is also more empty, but not going for realism. That, is that a space station? Yes! If it's not music, you hear weapon fire. Okay. That's, that's all I wanted to know. Weapon fire. All the groups. Crushing opposition. Crushing opposition. It's generic and definitely undercooked for this time period. There were strategy games ten years before this with way better soundscapes and much smaller budgets. Yeah. It can also drive me nuts and some fights sound like a child fiddling with a lightsaber. <laughs> Not to mention, for how over the top the setting like is, that. the actual in-game voice acting can be weirdly casual. 
Especially huh? after the intro, they rarely gel with the world they're inhabiting. I thought they set a clear tone. Time to die. Time to die. Suck them dry. I don't know. I feel yeah, a disconnect. Yeah. The voices there are some characters that are better, feel but it's like still very budget. Genocide is on the way. <laughs> That's more <laughs> like it. The soundtrack is the biggest audio standout. Uh, are you a ready decent amount to of it is your standard guys RTS battle orchestra kind oh of sound. God. But like the wailing in the intro, sometimes it taps into something what is wrong, way more Sir unique. Beck? As an example, what is wrong with you, Sir Fay? <laughs> just stop being the way the voice lines in this stupid game are. It's hilarious. It's so well, monotone, it hurts. Space game music. You can clearly tell when someone is just trying to put on an old man voice sometimes. Still great production it does value, happen. especially considering the rest of the soundscape. Then you have a track like, like Cruciform that steps it up. No! I mean, that's not bad music. It sounds like we're going into Deep Space Fable. Ready to hyperspace. I do like the droning monk sounds. Like the monk beat of... If we're going with, like, old church, you know, sci-fi core things, then the monk singing always works. Yeah. Or for Halo for some reason, because the opening of that has monks. Well, yeah. John 117, Halo, the Flood is the enemy of a group trying to wipe out everything. There's so many Bible nah, references, it's insane, Fable. Nah, I don't know. I don't see it. I yeah. don't see it. Yeah, it. pushes you over. <laughs> There's a little more emotion showing with those. Yeah. The issue comes from how often you hear the generic battle theme over and over again. Oh, the that composer sucks. has so much range that's just underused. Yeah, one he part is. Where you're investigating a new alien I race can tell based that around right crystals away. and ice, and the soundtrack is just people and children whispering. Okay, that's something I would it's hear like in a horror like a game or something. So the game can have its moments of standout. <laughs> you're in a weird ASMR video. We're in a weird ASMR video. I would rather not be in one. I've tried ASMR. I don't think people like me time. doing ASMR. But there are some gems in there. I've seen some oh around in a fairly popular Homeworld 2 mod, but never in a Warhammer lore video or something like that. Oh. Maybe that'll change now. Okay, let's talk about the game itself. It's okay. Homeworld on bath salts. What? I guess that's not too fair since mechanically they are very different, but there's a lot of influence here. I still want to play Homeworld. similarities in the visuals and structure and even some missions near one-to-one, -one, you also command a persistent fleet throughout the campaign. This wasn't uncommon at the time, since almost every space RTS game definitely had some homeworld influence. I always like it when you, like, keep your troops from one battle to another, because it feels like we're actually progressing with the troops I started with. ...story and writing in homeworld makes something like a persistent fleet feel like it matters. Mm. Whereas here in other games, you go, oh, that's convenient. Besides, Genesis Rising takes place in a 2D plane, since very few games still wanted to tackle the 3D space element. I wish they There's would, no though. There's kind of veterancy, but the persistent fleet is neat for capturing enemy ships. Because, so you know, it's space. You can move in all three directions. All three axes. The lab ship, you can build everything that your adversary has. This still sounds better than it is, because there are barely any ships per <laughs> faction. Besides your Omnicruiser, you can only build three kinds of combat ships, and not that many. Wow. Most ships don't innately have That's abilities either, they're very just limited. platforms for more mutations. Ah. So bigger ships have more health, and more options determined by you. With a persistent fleet, you might think how genes and mutations work in the campaign could be harsh, but it's not at all. When you find a new oh. gene by shunting it out of a corpse or trading for it, that gene becomes permanently unlocked in your bank. Oh, wow. It's more like you're unlocking the template for it, instead of a singular item. But you can also find and trade for special items, which are exactly that. Single-use modifications that you lose if a ship is destroyed. Something okay. like a stun ability or nuclear missiles. As the campaign goes on, you can eventually find genes for the special items as well, so they're more just a temporary help. You'll also be finding upgraded genes, which cost more blood to equip on your ship, genes, but are better at what fable. they do. Genes. Simple enough so far, but what stops you from making a min-maxing diction? But my genes for are one, dirty, and I don't need to wear them until winter. Oh my god. 
they do. It's true. Simple enough so far, but what stops you from making a min-maxing dick ship? For one, no. mutating a ship actually increases its max health, but it's not filled in immediately. Oh, it takes time. The ship will need to fill up or be healed another way. This makes shifting in battle a bad idea. On top of that, any active abilities like a purge or a shield or some kind of special missile will generate heat. When it overheats, it can't use abilities again until it cools down. Which means you can put a death missile on something like a station, but it'll take forever to recharge. Now on paper, and at a few points in the game, the system is really engaging. You hmm. do some easy baked gene splicing before a fight, determine what <laughs> abilities work best on what ships, gene splicing. and with so few ships but all these mutations, it looks like there should be a lot of tactical depth to the game. Except there really isn't, and beyond that, the interface makes everything a pain in the ass to play. On the balance side, when you discover the freeze gene, which immobilizes your enemy for oh. ages, including oh. stations, most other active abilities go in the trash. While they yeah, look being able to stun your enemy to where they can't do anything, even if it's where they can't do anything to you, or you can't do anything to them, is incredibly powerful, because that means you get so much prep time to do whatever the hell Not you the want. Prep time. Yeah. Not the prep time. Yes, Fable prep time. I freeze you and put prep time. Now you have to deal with Cloud of Daggers. Oh, no. Look neat visually. Also, besides question the mark, I know this might be a bit out of left field, but what do you think of the designs of the Cybertrucks? I think they're they're goofy. They look like something I'd see in Cyberpunk that I would immediately get shot at. My friend said they look like they're something straight out of the PS1 era. Yeah, they do. And I completely agree. Yes, they're completely right. I completely right. <laughs> agree. That should not be a thing. Please redesign it, that monstrosity. Here's the thing. It doesn't even operate as a truck, right? Because a truck has to be strong in order to lift a lot of things. You can't even haul a lot of things with that thing. Yeah. After hard damage aspect, I didn't feel much of a difference between most of the weapons. Short range especially could feel completely interchangeable. The late game oh. does try to open up more tactical and utility items, especially in one mission that makes the most out of the system having you resurrect enemy ships and moving abilities around. Cool. But at that point your fleet is enough of a murder machine that it doesn't matter that much. Hearing that, you might think the game is overly easy, but no, this can be a tough one for all the wrong reasons. Oh. You can't save any kind of gene loadout or build to quickly drag onto a ship, so every time you build a new one, you have to go into the menu and manually mutate it by quick drag. Oh, that different sounds annoying. Different also don't have annoying. different hotkeys, it's just the same use active ability hotkey. To manually use one means clicking on the icon above the craft or on the side panel. And you never get used to where things are because where the ships and mutations are at are moving around all the time. It's oh, also no. hard to tell from the footage, but the mouse has a ton of weird drag to it. The so it's hard in the annoying way, not hard in the actual difficult way. This is clearly meant for a 4x3 ratio since it's stretched out, but the game itself does support widescreen. All the cutscenes are in widescreen. I'm not what sure what's hell? going on there, but the mouse lacks precision and feels clunky to use. There's other strangeness, like hold space to toggle mutations showing up in the side panels, but then they'll disappear. It turns oh. out the ships are camera shy, and if they're on screen, their ability will disappear from the panel, <laughs> so you can click on the ship itself. What the if hell? If it's actually in your field of view. There was a toggle to make them show up permanently, but that would either crash the game or make it more prone to crash. Wow! I have no clue why that's not on by default. The interface being so clunky makes you prey to your biggest enemy, the missiles. One huh? of the missile genes has slight lock-on, extreme range, and gets more powerful the longer it's in the air. When you launch them at enemies, they rarely hit, but when they launch them at you, you just die. Oh. Ship destroyed. I cannot count how many times I got own zoned by missiles. You're notified Dear God. weapons that don't matter constantly. Like, look out, a breeder's on the way. That's nothing. So you might miss someone somewhere has launched a missile, and then a <laughs> ship gets insta-killed at full health. These aren't super weapons either, it's just a long-range mutation you could slap oh, on any ship. Oh, no! The notification could mean a light tickle, or you are now instant bone jelly. You might get the notification during a fight thinking it's a short-range missile from there, but really it's from across the map and you won't be seeing it for a minute or so. Dear God, that's horrible! This is also a good time to remind you there's no in-mission saving. You can be on a map for a half hour or more, let an important ship out of your sight for a little too long, and it gets zapped by a missile. I was living in terror of these fucking things, and even with my paranoia, I was still barely dodging them in time. Usually oh, the God damn. Past the you know what strangely this makes me think about? Uh, do you remember Robot Santa Claus from the... Uh... Uh, Futurama. Fable? Futurama. Yes, there's one part where he quite literally says, Your mistletoe is no... What's this about Futurama? Uh, there's a... You remember Evil Santa Claus from there? The robot Santa Claus? Yeah. 
I remember a, I remember a stupid part now where he says, Your missile toe is stands no chance against my toe missile. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Ship and obliterate oh, so something dull. else. And that's fine until mm. the game crashes. Oh. I only know some things likely to cause a crash, and one is a large ship dying. There were simple missions I spent hours on purely from crashing or from getting fox tooed by a space whale. It was getting oh. to a point I don't fox often forget by a space so whale. scrapping it purely from how often the thing was crashing or I was getting missiled. I was starting to remember why I hadn't finished this game all those years ago. Uh, Should yeah. I push through for the story? It's not like a good story. And Crashing will make anyone get anxious about just quitting. I did that when I was playing Fallout 1. There's a part in like a far off dungeon where that's really tough. That, uh... Let me put it this way, Fable. It crashes so often. Oh no. So I had to say before every single combat or after every single combat... Because otherwise, I would just lose progress then, through the dungeon. I saw the rock make first contact with an alien race. Oh. We're making first contact, Fable. Hmm. Nothing's happening. Hmm? What the fuck? What the hell? What the fuck? Uh, interesting uh, reports. Whoa. No, you, you can't do this to me. You do that and it's like, now I have to see what happens. <laughs> what the I'm fuck? I'm not sure how to sum up the story. <laughs> A lot of it was surprise filler, and the other parts were written like something from the Pepsi-verse. What? Had some interesting ideas, <laughs> What but... the hell is the Pepsi-verse? Someone explain this to me. Go into the comments and explain what the hell is the Pepsi verse. The kind of ideas you'd find scrawled in feces at a bus stop. Oh. I'm only getting into spoilers since I really can't tell where a stopping point is in the story. There are also choices to make and several different endings depending on what you do in the final mission. Okay. When you receive your mission to hunt for the heart, you meet Vicar Juno, the representative of the bishop. He introduces your choice mechanic, blue bald or red bald. Obviously, the intention is that blue is the friendly diplomatic what? option, and red is an aggressive response. You know, Petri uh, so I try both on infinity. You know, uh, pe not Petragon, uh, Paragon or Renegade sort of stuff. You know, Mass Effect. Oh. Either be nice or be an asshole. Oh yeah, yeah Renegade for life. No. Always Paragon. <laughs> the head of the judges. Most responses boil down to yes or sarcastic yes, and many Western RPGs would perfect this formula in the following years. No matter what, Infinity is very interested in you. We are very much alike, you and I. When you return, perhaps we could spend some quality time together. Uh, perhaps. But look what happens perhaps. when I choose Paragon Rock here. You deny that you were defiance? State your designation. I have enough trouble, I'll try to be nice to the Strog, and we'll see- No! Why would you think we are defiance? Red is worse than that? Designation? Oh. Human. We're called humans. No, oh. they're just assigned to the wrong button sometimes. Wow. So the aliens with the organic ships are the defiance. They're a confederation of races against the human empire, including some that humanity thought they wiped out ages ago. Oh. This is a great idea for when you're playing as the heel. You can learn about the races humans have stomped down, and then decide how to deal with them. That makes You'll sense. have some options of where you can travel to first, or even go off track or backtrack. Typically, this only means getting your standard skirmish map with maybe an opportunity for new genes. But I appreciate the attempt at putting the journey more in your hands, even if it's pretty barren. Anyhow, yeah. the Defiance are also nasty in their own way. They've been oppressing the local Strog for years, who are all too happy to join you on your genocide. <laughs> there may not yeah, be many Defiance, but sense. they are a major threat. They've invented oh. parasitic weaponry, which can consume a living ship from the inside out. Oh. And if they get around, humanity's greatest weapons will be useless. It establishes a mystery of how they were formed and discovered the secrets of organids. Does it have something to do with the heart? Well, that whole thread dies quietly. Because while searching for the heart, the Defiance suddenly erupt in the Civil War. During oh. your journey, you've seen mysterious <laughs> pillars that have traces of blood air, which is apparently a sign <laughs> of the universal. What the fuck was that image? <laughs> the Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> blood air. These pillars oh are the Lapis Altars. Oh. Half of the Defiance think that destroying them will anger the Lapis Gods and cause the Apocalypse. The other half believes that not destroying them will cause the Apocalypse. Oh. Tough break. Fool! 
If these ultras are not destroyed, the Lapis will come. So they're incredibly what? against each other because they think if one does the other, Armageddon will happen. Wow. That's a that's a tough break. I've been told they'll come if you do destroy the altars. Preposterous! The locals think the Lapis are gods, but the truth is that they are a primitive species. Without these altars, they aren't even capable of space travel. You learn more about the Lapis from the Cold Whites, uh -huh. a mysterious all-female tit race that you saw in the big cutscene. Oh my you god. You could put an eye out with those things, lady. They're called Oh the my god. Well, that's... Wow. They live in the cold part of space. And are white. <laughs> they do point you in the direction of the Lapis themselves, who what are the rock fuck? people. They oh. build their ships from asteroids and are essentially thinking rocks. They don't oh. communicate with outsiders, only attack them, which is why some aliens theorize that they're not sentient at all, and that just comes from the pillars. They do follow blood air, which again, means heart. At this point, oh. Infinity and Vicar Juno arrive, and The Rock explains what's happening. He still wants <laughs> to go rock. track down the heart, but the Chair of Three demands the Defiance die, and they're defeated the next mission. This leads to a two-year time skip, which is where you spend your time getting pissed drunk with the piss juice. <laughs> Mankind rules the sector, and instead of hunting down the heart, you do errands like taking the aliens to mass. What? You get missions, shaking extraterrestrials in their bed going, wake up, it's time for church. <laughs> you especially need some Hail Marys. You might need some too, if you enter the romance with Infinity. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, Fable, I just, I don't know how to describe what's going on in this game to you. Um, I want to say someone had an idea, but didn't properly think about how to do it. Well, By that, I mean they didn't properly have everything set up story-wise. Yeah, that sounds about right. Either that or budget cuts. Either that or, either that or budget cuts. My mo my money is either budget cuts or a combination of both. Possibly. Because I don't know what's going on. <laughs> All I know is that humanity sucks, and they're pretty much making everything go extinct. Also, apparently, you need to wake up the aliens and take them to church on missions. But but I don't want to go to church. That's stupid. No, it's not. You're going to church, Vale, because you're an alien. I don't want to go to church. I'm a fey. I'm the farthest thing from believing in the Catholic Church or any other religion. Oh, God. Anyway. This is a fairy tale romance. True. What the... Fairy tale? Now, tell her what every woman wants to hear in this moment. Uh... Don't worry, Infinity. I won't tell anyone. What the fuck? Captain! Is that a dwarf man? Or is there looks... something wrong with the shape for No, I don't think so. He looks like a he looks like a Warcraft character, this guy. I was uh, just <laughs> making <laughs> contact <laughs> with uh, this woman. What the fuck? I see. I was just curious as to why <laughs> we haven't left yet. Legal issues. I have to take care of some details. <laughs> <laughs> this you know? is so awkward. I wish they just let us do our job. Yeah. It's like they can't decide between Warhammer 40k or Farscape. They can't decide a. <laughs> is he going for the fish? It's so messy, and only the more fanatical characters actually feel authentic for the setting it's showing. They package the game with epic choirs and monstrous spaceships. Then characters get to talking, and it's half B movie and half YouTube poop. Yeah. Except not nearly that fun, and how some things are resolved is so unsatisfying. To wrap up the mess arc, the Lapis attack by throwing rocks, as they were lured there by the traitorous Cold Whites. Which means killing the Cold White leader, uh. and killing the Defiance, again. Uh. <laughs> Juno is so pleased by this that he sends you out to look for the heart, again. again. The enigmatic cerebral race might know more. Look, it's another Juno creature. What the fuck? I know they seem trustworthy, but they give you the runaround until you just murder them for the information, which is to put the pillars in the right order. Sounds but about your right. Your father appears to tell you that he found the heart and it imprisoned him, and it'll surely imprison you too. But the magic rocks already opened the portal, which will surely lead to the heart, right? Father? What? The he has. He has. Am I dead? No, son. I brought you here to make certain that you don't die. You brought him back you in mean, time. I'm in the past. Yes. But why? 
<laughs> it is easy for them to kill you now, in the past. What? Who's them? You will see. I have been skimming over details, but I promise you, we did not- What the- <laughs> I just- I don't know what to say to that. I mean, Mac, it's pretty simple. It's easier to kill them in the past. For some reason. I'm gonna push you over again. That's so rude. Do not need time travel. You play back in the baby Omni Cruiser with your dad in the past fighting ships from the future. You win, travel back to the future, reunite with your fleet, and okay. then defeat the giant three portal guardian heads. Which oh. puts you back to where things were, except you then get the only diplomacy scene with music. Is what? this the future? Actually, no. It is the past. The far distant past. What? I don't understand. If we're in the past, why are you... I have spent over 50 years in a past so distant that humans don't yet exist. Or at least they didn't. Until I came here and established a new human empire of my own. So what? Juno went back in time to create an even more overpowered human empire, <laughs> which is the Inquisition. <laughs> and he can do this because the heart controls time, and he wanted Icona dead because he thought he was a liability for no reason. What the fuck? We adding time travel to this plot. I forgive you. All of that is in the past. Or the future, actually. Time travel. <laughs> it can be a bit what? confusing. You I think? Simplifying Mac. there. The plan Mac. really is just... I forgive you. All of that is in the past. Or possibly the future. Yeah, right I push back. you out of your wheelchair. <laughs> Why am I in a wheelchair all of a sudden? <laughs> I don't know, you just are. We're in the past now, Fable. Anything's possible. Just to make the human empire even more awesomer. It's not till <laughs> mid-conversation that the band wakes up. What about the chair of three? I can't imagine they're too happy about your little foray into the past. They don't know about this. And they will never find out, because they will never exist. Oh boy. No more meddling from fools who do not deserve the positions conveyed upon them. Come, Icon. You can be a part of this. Join me as my admiral. Lead my armies to glory. Glory for all mankind. Oh boy. You cannot join him here. It's a ridiculous plan, but why not? Yeah. Leon offers to help get Dad back if you join him, and Icona still says no. This is the apex of how disjointed everything has been. We've been playing an evil genocidal empire, wiping out enemies left and right all game. But they still want to play you off as being Space McGunn's fun adventure man, <laughs> who is, at best, indifferent to aliens as long as they align with his goals. He doesn't want to break the yeah. timeline and get everything he's wanted and more because Juno's the bad guy. If your character was played as a villain with ambitions for power, going up against Juno because he'll be the supreme ruler would make sense here. Yeah, it Everything would. else in the setting and the game screams that you should be evil, yet they didn't commit to it. Imagine how fun Why? an evil space captain could be. Throwing aliens at the airlock, announcing mandatory blood taxes, and dropping awful one-liners. It uh, honestly sounds sound like a fun game somewhere that someone made. What mustache twirling villain, or at least dedicated space marine. This is just empty. You do escape Juno and make contact with the Lapis, who point you towards their leader. Why are you attacking me? You destroyed the Lapis altars. Oh god. Destroyed them? No, that hasn't happened yet. That happens in the future. Oh my god. It is all the same. <laughs> is the boss battle with the giant rock ship that has your dad. I'm and you back. Meet leader, Welcome Malachia. back. We're here apparently in the past still. Oh lord. And the choir's playing. And what? Oh my yes. Mac, I'm gonna make a villain that does really cr uh, crappy one-liners and just unexpectedly evil. Uh, you're just describing yourself, Abel. Come on. I know. It's beautiful. Oh my god. See it now. I don't see anything but a planet. Is the planet his vessel? He is the first brother. He is Malachio. He huh? requires no vessel. Who said that? 
Melage reveals many secrets of the universe, <laughs> the most alarming one being that he is beefing on a personal level with God. Melage was supposed what? to be the only life form in the universe, but then God made more life to piss him off. What? He and God are no longer on speaking terms, and it's not clear what caused the fight. <laughs> I don't. A cat. Fable's eating while we're doing this. I I just I don't know. I and was then, eating a banana. A... I was eating a simple banana, and then all I hear is, "Yeah, God created more stuff to piss this dude off for some reason." <laughs> Why? I don't so know. <laughs> That's such a stupid storyline. <laughs> Revenge against all life. Yeah. created. Oh, he wants revenge against. Apparently, Malagio wants revenge against all life the now. Lapis. They obliterate everything on sight. Why not God? Why is he going after God? everything yeah. else besides the one person who pissed him off? I guess he can't so touch. So stupid. I guess he can't touch God or it's something. All life. Then how can Malapis are only found in this part of the universe? In the beginning, this was all of the universe. But God betrayed Melagio yet again and expanded the universe. <laughs> I like he's using All a fucking... All of existence was made purely to spite this dude. Nothing in the Old Testament comes within leagues of being this petty. Apparently, Juno... Oh, he talked about, about the Book of Job. God damn. ...of organ and device in the heart of the universe. If you destroy it, Melagio will protect the heart and contain the lapis for all of eternity. Then Dad calls to say no, destroy Malagio's control rock, no one should control the heart of the universe. And Juno is on line two, <laughs> telling you to mutate his device so that you can rule the galaxy forever. Now you show down with your greatest rival, the other two endings. Huh? Funny, I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking. You think we got too close to the oh my God. And, and Juno used that to his advantage. I'm glad we understand each other. <laughs> We should use this phenomenon to our advantage. What the fuck? This is so... So stupid. What the hell am I watching today? To finish what we know. started? I don't know who picked it. Exactly. I didn't expect this to be my day, but you know. <laughs> I know exactly what we should do. What? Me too. So do I. It all led to this, all the crashing, all the missile murders. A crazy man arguing over what god rock to kick. Talk about your split decisions. You know, I've been around you guys for about a minute now, and I already don't like you. Either of you. The feeling's mutual. What the fuck? I think I know how to handle this. Supported by the numbers. <laughs> he's just playing... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just needed a little break. No, he's playing Homeworld. Three of me and I still can't make a decision. <laughs> like, I'm pretty hard to convince when I think I'm right. Me too. Maybe we should go through the portal again. See which one of us makes it through. Jesus Christ. They fight. <laughs> they all fight. And then you know. Even, that... <laughs> Even Mandalore's tired of their squabbling. One of the hardest missions because they mirror your ships, your genes, everything you have. They also appear to be teamed up against you because I never saw them fight each other. So the oh. trick here is to completely scrap your own fleet and sell off everything. Oh. In a move of ultimate catharsis, you can give them the one-shot missile. Even though it's technically still you being one-shot. <laughs> Sayonara to two rocks in a hard place. Though to give the game credit, every ending does have a fully animated cutscene. Huh. If you take Melagio's deal, the Chair of Three is irritated, but life goes on. They'll take another crack at Ultimate Ascension or whatever the plan was at another point in the future. Melagio keeps his word, and Dad is replaced in eternal prison with Juno. Oh. Rob me of my place in eternity! I must take my place next to God! No! <laughs> you look so silly! Oh my god. If you do what Dad asks and wipe out the stone, Icona considers it as being returning control to God. Strangely, it's this ending where we see some lust for power brewing in him. The heart was not ours to take. Not yet. We may rule the material side of the universe, but we have much to material? learn about the spiritual beings that we aspire to be. Is he talking about f entering the fucking warp? What the hell? He was still alive, but younger again for some reason. A lot of his Inquisition soldiers survived somehow and will be secretly breeding a new army. With all the time travel shenanigans, I have no idea how this works. 
These endings are each about two minutes Mac. long. Naturally, what? the one where you cycle. It, when I finish when I finish Elden Ring, there's gonna be a newspaper that says "Local Man Ends Reincarnation for a Hug." For a hug, well, yes, of course there is. Yeah. I'd with Juno to make humanity the ultimate power in the universe is the shortest one and considered the bad ending. Sounds about right. Welcome to the new eternity, my son. I hope it was worth it. Was it worth it, Fable? How much did it cost? Oh, One hug. Well then. I don't understand. This game frustrates me to no end. Even if it was completely stable and not full of janky bugs, it's still not a game I'd recommend unless you desperately wanted to see these ships for yourself. It's clearly lifting a lot from Warhammer, but when it goes yeah. out on its own direction, it can get really fascinating at times. It was brought up abruptly, but God feuding with someone causing the universe <laughs> is an out there idea that I you mean, could expand on more. Hell, that even sounds like an interesting idea, honestly. Scale down evil human empire with organic ships is an idea that rules. But with how the mutation system works and how clunky and unbalanced it yeah, is, yeah, someone needs to remake this style of game. Off since skirmish mode isn't worth going to, and you're not getting on multiplayer. The thing is, when I play these janky Eastern European games that are largely forgotten, even when the execution sucks, there are always cool ideas present. It's There's always and clunky, it, and the tone isn't a vibe. It's always the ones that have potential that make you the most frustrated. You know. The yeah. One, the ones that you think this could have gone somewhere. But even after all these years, the image of a spaceship exploding into blood never left me. They made a future mm. where mankind is lost, blood is fuel, and hell was made to aggravate a space rock. <laughs> the Organids are still the height of bioships for me. The only setting I can think of that's similar is the Leviathan trilogy of books. Oh. It's an alternate World War One where the central powers use mechs, and the Allies made war machines by playing God with DNA. Oh. Some of more YA books, but the Keith Thompson art books are worth picking up. And God damn. that covers it for Genesis Rising. It's one of those games where, someday, someone will do something incredible with the idea. Even with all its migraine features, I can't deny there is cool stuff here. Yeah, I tried my I best to get into it, but in the end, I couldn't smell what the rock was cooking. <laughs> the system is freezing. Let's find what we need and get out as soon as possible. I love that. I couldn't smell what the rock is cooking, Fable. a multiplayer experience I can't recreate but remember fondly. My go-to is always Battle Swarm because that game got shut down. That. Oh, Tremulous is a good runner up. Swarm. I think it's playable but just doesn't have players. What is my opinion? I love that name. What is my opinion on Ubisoft? <laughs> what is that? What is that? Oh, I couldn't see it. AI writers. I mean, there are exceptions, but a lot of stuff from there has already felt like it was written by robots. Yeah. I understand. For now, they're using it for random background chatter, supposedly to help the writers focus on the core stuff. But it's Ubisoft. Someone up there yeah. is hoping to replace a lot more people with machines. Ubisoft will never be able to fully do it. They're already trash and bland. Can I give a hint about the size two fish? Has no one actually caught it yet? I figured more people would have it by now. Do I plan way ahead for the adventure game videos? Some stuff is on rotation, so I don't know which comes first. But essentially, yeah. It was yeah. fun seeing a lot of people notice Glug for the first time in the Druids video. Any yeah. chance for Darkest of Days? There are three or four time travel games I'd like to cover in a block, like one oh, yeah. a week. So that'll take some- Well, we already saw Darkest of Days, but yeah, thank you all so much, and if you like what I'm doing here, sub, tell me what you want us to react to next time, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.